Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 states, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. This verse serves as a gateway into the depths of God's revelatory message, encapsulating key themes and purposes that resonate throughout the entirety of Revelation. Firstly, it is essential to recognize that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The focus is unmistakably on Christ, affirming his centrality not only in this prophecy, but in the entirety of God's redemptive plan. This revelation is of him, from him, and about him. It is a manifestation of his glory, a testament to his authority, and a vision of his ultimate victory. The phrase, which God gave him, underscores the divine origin of this revelation. It is not a product of human insight or speculation, but a revelation from the Almighty God to Jesus Christ. This hierarchical delivery from God to Christ and then to John highlights the divine chain of command and the authority of the message. It affirms the truth that God is the ultimate source of all revelation and that he reveals his purposes according to his sovereign will. To show his servants, things which must shortly take place, speaks to the urgency and relevance of the prophecy. The term shortly here is not merely a reference to time, but also to imminence. It suggests that the events described are poised on the brink of history, ready to unfold as part of the divine timetable. This is a call to vigilance and preparedness, as the fulfillment of these prophecies could commence at any time. Furthermore, the manner in which this revelation was communicated is also significant. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John reveals the method of transmission. The use of an angel as the messenger underscores the seriousness and sacredness of this revelation. It is a heavenly messenger entrusted with delivering this vital communication to John, God's chosen servant. This not only authenticates the message, but also illustrates the heavenly origin and spiritual nature of this revelation. Verse 1 sets the stage for the entire book, establishing its divine origin, Christocentric focus, imminent relevance, and the heavenly method of its transmission. It invites believers to approach this book with reverence, anticipation, and a heart ready to respond to the unfolding mysteries of God's final plan for the world. As we proceed, let us do so with a spirit of discernment, seeking to understand and apply the timeless truths contained within these sacred pages. Verse 2 fortifies the message with further clarity and purpose. This verse reads, Who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. Here, the Apostle John is identified not only as the recipient of the revelation, but also as its faithful witness. The term witness is pivotal, implying more than just a passive observer. In biblical context, a witness is one who testifies to the truth, often at great personal cost. John's role as a witness emphasizes his active participation in declaring and upholding the truth of the revelation he received. The phrase, to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, is particularly telling. It delineates the dual nature of the content of this revelation. Firstly, it is the word of God, divine, authoritative, and unchangeable. It is the ultimate truth, transcending human wisdom and understanding. Secondly, it is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is a direct reference to the gospel, the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, as affirmed later in Revelation. It speaks of his redemptive work and his imminent return, serving as a beacon of hope for believers. The latter part of the verse, to all things that he saw, underscores the experiential nature of John's witness. 
He is testifying to what he has personally seen, not what he has heard or imagined. This emphasizes the reliability and authenticity of the revelation. John's testimony is based on his direct, visual encounter with the visions given to him, making him a credible and authoritative source for this prophetic message. In bridging verse 1 and verse 2, we see a seamless transition from the presentation of the Revelation's divine origin and purpose to the establishment of John's role as a faithful witness. This sets a firm foundation for the entire book, underscoring its authenticity and authority as a divine message, meant not only for the early church, but for all believers across the ages. As we continue to explore this profound book, let us hold fast to these truths, recognizing the weight and significance of the testimony laid before us. Verse 3 adds a profound dimension to the significance of this prophetic book. This verse declares, Blessed is he who reads, and those who hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. This verse begins with a promise of blessing, a theme that is unique to Revelation among the prophetic books. The blessing is twofold. It is for the one who reads and for those who hear the words of this prophecy. This distinction acknowledges both the individual engagement with Scripture and the communal experience of receiving God's Word. The act of reading signifies a personal delve into the depths of the prophecy while hearing represents the corporate aspect of the church engaging with the Word of God together. Moreover, the verse doesn't merely call for a passive reading or hearing, it emphasizes the need to keep those things which are written. This speaks to the application of the prophecy in the life of the believer. It is not enough to simply understand the content. There is a call to adhere to it, to let it inform and transform lives. This obedience is not merely a legalistic adherence, but an alignment with the will and purposes of God as revealed in this book. The closing phrase, for the time is near, echoes the sense of imminence that pervades the entire book of Revelation. This is not a prophecy for a distant future, but a relevant message for every generation of believers. It is a reminder that the fulfillment of God's plans is at hand, and therefore, the words of this prophecy carry a sense of urgency and importance. From verse 2 to verse 3, we see a movement from the authentication of the prophecy through John's witness to the personal and corporate responsibility of believers in response to this prophecy. This verse challenges readers not only to engage with the text, but to embody its teachings, living in anticipation of the fulfillment of God's sovereign plan. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Revelation, let us do so with a heart committed to understanding, obeying, and applying the profound truths revealed in this divine prophecy. Thank you all for tuning in and being a part of our community here at Gospel Illuminations. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button to show your support. Please share your thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to Gospel Illuminations for more inspiring and uplifting content. Your support means the world and helps this channel grow. Thank you again, and stay blessed.